Your girl finally caved and is going to try to garden, but I didn't want to start somewhere too overwhelming. So I DIY'd a smaller raised planter box that I think might be useful for anybody that wants to just give this a go, but not feel like you're taking on too much. And it's a great solution for people in apartments with smaller balconies and outdoor spaces. I've been really trying to challenge myself and utilize the scrap wood that I have on hand. So the planter box itself is going to be made out of an old cedar fence post that I had laying around. I'm gonna miter that down to the sizes that are gonna fit my space. The cedar fence plank itself is actually seven and a half inches wide, which means the planter box will be seven and a half inches deep. I am cutting two pieces down to 35 inches long. So that is as wide as the planter box will be. And then I am cutting down two pieces to be 10 inches, which will make the planter box 10 inches deep. For the legs, I cut down four two by twos to 29 inches long, but you can adjust that accordingly to your space. I just wanted it to be as high as the wall I'm gonna be putting it in front of. So that was kind of your focal point. I decided to add an extra detail by just using my circular saw and adjusting the depth of the blade to run along horizontally the pieces to almost make it look like shiplap. So when it connects, it just has that extra texture on the outside and it tailors it a little bit more in my opinion. Whatever the width of your wood is, minus seven and a half, I just broke that into three separate sections. So that means I just had to use my circular saw to run along a straight edge twice on each piece to create three faux pieces of shiplap. This will not be the only detail we will be adding. I also partnered up with my friends over at Brother to add a really rad detail that I didn't think was possible. Also, your girl messes up, so we'll deal with that later. But I did partner up with Brother to add another extra detail, which we'll dive into later. I continued to do that O-ship lap to the remaining pieces before we're going to assemble the walls of the raised planter box. You can assemble the walls however you want. Right here, if you're going to be putting the legs up against the longer wall of the planter box, you're gonna be able to see the end grain of the shorter wall. And I realized that after I assembled it, and I don't want that. I want you to just see that front long piece by itself without the two stubs on the end of the shorter wall. To assemble the entire thing, I am using my wood glue and nail gun, but you are welcome to use a screwdriver if you don't have a nail gun. I just like to use a nail gun and then fill those holes up, but that's where I realized I messed up. Had to take it apart, re-glue that wall with a little bit of a lip at the end so that can just edge up how I wanted it to. I made one half and then the other, and then I put those together because it was just a lot more easy to handle by myself. I clamped it into place as I added supports throughout the middle, and depending how long your planter box is, you might have to frame out a bit differently, but because these are gonna be potable herbs or veggies that I'll be growing in here because it is so small and it's a tester, I just added three two by twos to support across the 36 inch long planter box. After securing those into place, I found this pin on Pinterest that I linked down below for you that was really helpful for me with the build and got some wire and cut that down to the size of the base of the planter, just a little bit bigger because we are going to need to staple it into place. The reason I am leaving this open is because after I add my compartments that I want to splice up, I am going to weed line it so nothing grows into one another, but I am also gonna make it so it can water plants down below. And again, this is not holding a lot of weight because I am a beginner to this world. So I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm getting in where I fit in, but I also am starting where I know I'm not gonna feel overwhelmed. So build according to how you're feeling. If you need something hefty, large, and in charge, look up that type of planner, but this is something that I thought was easy for everybody to start with. I don't think the sections are necessary, but I went ahead and did so because I wanted to see the sections up top to carry that wood through the dirt. I know that sounds so lame, but guess what? I'm building it for my house and nobody else has to deal with it besides me. And I really like how it's looking. So I decided to tailor it a little bit further and I had a one by two on hand. So I mitered that at a 45 degree angle and eat whoa on each end and connect that with my nail gun and some wood glue at the very top of the planner box to give it a little bit of a lip and clean it up. I wanted to add a shelf or a rack at the bottom, so I had three quarter inch dowels on hand that I cut down to be able to connect on the outside of the two by twos, not in between, and I shimmied that up the legs after I assembled it before, well that makes sense, I obviously assembled it before shimming it up the legs. Wow Rachel, what a great tutorial person you are. 
I continued to section off and you can come at me in the comments for it if it's not good for planner boxes to section it off but it's there and it's happening and they're thriving so far nothing's died so that's good I ripped down the cedar fence planks to two and a half inches and cut them to 11 and three quarters so it can fully go across that shelf. I also added three quarter inch dowel supports throughout that shelf because I realized it would start to bow through the middle. I might have to revisit this down the line because I don't think this will be the strongest structure, but I'm not, again, not putting a ton of weight on it. I used a scrap piece of wood to evenly space those pieces out, but I did not add a piece towards the ends of this rack slash shelf, whatever you want to call it, because I thought it made it look a little bit more modern versus covering up those edges. I cut down different sections of weed barrier and stapled that appropriately into each section of the planter box itself. Again, I don't know if this is necessary, but I am going to do so because I'm not building a base to this. If I didn't section it off, I still would have done the wire and then lined that entire planner box with the weed barrier but I think if I went that direction you might have to add more support on the bottom because that's going to equal more dirt so I'm just kind of working with the weight I'm anticipating putting in this planter box now that the build is done let's go ahead and add that extra detail I am using my brother's scan and cut SDX 125e and I purchased their embossing kit actually they didn't send this to me I was so interested in this feature that I just bought it myself and I wanted to give it a go to make labels for the herbs and the veggies the kit comes with everything you need to get started like the embossing mat where this piece of metal it's like thin and it's like paper metal it's crazy I wanted to use the copper option that they had available for you they also have a silver if you wanted that accent and I started to adjust the different types of herbs and veggies that I'm gonna be having in this planter according to the measurements of each section that we sectioned out in the actual planter box itself this is something I've been looking forward to because I will use this feature quite a bit. I think it would be really awesome to incorporate it into home decor and different like other types of builds, not just labels. You can scan the material into the Brothers Scanning Cut and place your design or whatever you wanted to emboss directly on top of it so you know you're not going outside of the material you're looking to emboss on. The embossing kit comes with the proper embossing cartridge, so you want to load and lock that into place and then click emboss and let it do its magic. I was pretty blown away by the precision of the embossing and if you guys are interested in checking out this Brother Scan and Cut SDX 125E, I have linked it down below for you in the description box. To finish up these labels, I cut down some scrap piece of wood I had on hand to be about two inches or I think it was like an inch and three quarters wide and then I cut out each label obviously you're not gonna keep them all on one paper I used industrial strength adhesive to glue those directly onto those pieces of wood When those were completely dry, I flipped them over, added a little bit of wood glue to the back in the middle, and cut down a skinny little dowel I had on hand to make sticks so I can, you know, put them into the actual soil of the plant. What is happening with my English? <laughs> I actually may redo these because I don't like how I cut so close to some of the words. I wish the copper filled up more of the wood, and but that's something that I can easily fix moving forward now that I know how to do the embossing on the scanning cut. Now we just get to plant and have some fun and look back at what we have done. That was a rhyme. Okay, I need to stop. I am not confident enough to dive in and tell you how I planted these things or what I used because I really just looked it up and asked a couple of friends since I'm a noob as well. You guys can follow my progress with my garden uh, over on my Instagram if you want to keep up to date because I will start posting daily over there about it. I'm absolutely obsessed now. I go and talk to them. I Now I get it. I get why people like gardening and plants. I finally have caved and I understand. I just want to emphasize that even though I didn't show it, I did do three coats of exterior finish on the entire planner wherever there was wood. I want to weatherproof and waterproof it, and you should too. So make sure you're taking those extra steps and really adding the final finish to ensure the build that you just did lasts. Thank you again to Brother for sponsoring today's episode and thank you to you guys for all your love and support no matter what video I've been putting out lately. I have a ton of makeovers behind the scenes that I'm currently working on. That's why we're kind of project based right now, but I promise May is like makeover month and it's my birthday month. So I can't wait to share all the goodness that's going to be happening. I will see you soon for another DIY.